I, I let me admit this. I not the school person, but I realized that because of my love for it, I had to do that. But we learned a lot about the body, um, anatomy, learning how to train different bodies because it's one thing to have experience mm. in training your own body. Mm. It's a completely different thing to know how to train somebody else's body. Yeah. So I had a similar experience when I went to gym for the first time. You know that you feel like you're so liberated yeah. and you feel like, mm -hmm. you know, inspired and confident. Mm -hmm. um, that confidence quickly dissipated after I got off a machine and the guy who got on after me had to move that, th <laughs> that thing <laughs> all the way down. And, and he didn't realize that he pulled the weight first and he, all, he almost knocked himself. Then he side-eyed me and he's like, hey, 5 kg. Yeah. Yeah. Your mornings with Maluma Tap. Joining us in studio this morning, please help me welcome uh, Bonge Gumede. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you just look like health and wellness, like oh, personified. Oh my, oh my <laughs> God, thank you. Thank you know, you. I was you standing tried. outside when you arrived yeah. and, and I was like, I, I thought maybe there, there's, there's like a virgin active <laughs> in, in, in the office park. I'm like, oh, this person is going to gym. Good morning and thanks morning. for waking up early and coming through to share a little bit about your inspiring work um, give us some insights onto fitness because you you do so much in empowering women through health um, so we'd like to explore that story between now and the end of the hour and I think to start us off take take us a little bit through your, your journey into becoming a fitness coach and how you became so passionate about helping others maintain their physical health well I feel like my journey started off with me um, just getting into the gym because I really had nothing going on for me. So I had the aesthetic goals. It was the kind of thing that's like, okay, you know, you get into the gym and you're like, you want to, you know, grow the butt and all the things. Then got into the gym and realized that I think it's a lot more than that. And that kind of uh, kickstarted my journey into working out and just feeling like I found something that would contribute to me, not only just the aesthetic goals that I had, but also what I, um, you know, my mental health and all the yeah. things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at that time, it when I first started, it was a very stressful time in my life. And so getting to a point where I just felt like when I got into the gym, it was just a different space. I was a lot more confident. I felt good. I felt like, okay, I'm doing something for me. So that's what it was for me. And then kind of being inspired to then take that on and, you know, COVID happened. And I started hosting classes, started taking on a lot of ladies, training together. And there was this app called House Party where we just... I think it was like a video calling app, but it was. It, I remember yeah. that from yeah, lockdown. Yeah, yeah, mm. and we it was for that, but we were like, no, actually, let's take it up a notch. And so we, I used to host classes on there. We would train together and get workouts in and sweat and all the things, and then that just took off from there. I had a similar experience when I went to gym for the first time. You know that you feel like you're so liberated yeah. and you feel like, mm -hmm. you know, inspired and confident. Mm -hmm. um, that confidence quickly dissipated after I got off a machine and the guy who got on after me had to move that, th <laughs> that <laughs> thing <laughs> all the way down. And, and he didn't realize that he pulled the weight first and he, all, uh, he almost knocked himself. Then he side-eyed me and he's like, hey, 5 kg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back down to the 50 kg. I was like, hey, maybe this thing is, is not for me. How, yeah. long, how long would you say that you've been involved in, in the fitness space? I think it's about seven years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been working out for seven years. I've uh, been training for at least um, five years. Do you have any like qualifications around it? Did you, did yes. you go and study the stuff? Um, I did. I have a uh, certification in exercise science and sports conditioning. Wow. I just completed my studies last year. Still looking to go on and further my studies because I am the person that's like, okay, I don't think we ever stop learning. So that's me. And also because I love it so much. I just feel like there's no cap to it for me. Yeah. What do you study with with exercise science and sports conditioning? What, what do you guys learn at school? Yeah, at the gym. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I, I let me admit this. I not the school person, but I realized that because of my love for it, I had to do that. But we learned a lot about the body, um, anatomy, learning how to train different bodies because it's one thing to have experience mm. in training your own body. Mm. It's a completely different thing to know how to train somebody else's body. Yeah. So achieving weight loss, achieving weight gain and all the things. And so just learning how the body responds, the nutrition aspect of it, the mental health aspect of it, and just learning around all of that. Yeah. It kind of shapes you and also gives you an insight on how to actually work uh, with different people 
and to be able to train different people from different spaces. Let's speak on the foundations of wellness. You know, what would you say are some fundamental aspects of physical health that everybody should focus on, like all of us? Um, and then we can be a bit more specific and then look at women and what they should also focus on. Mm -hmm. But what are those fundamentals? I think the most important thing is just moving your body. I think sometimes with fitness, it's complicated because it's made to seem like you have to be in the gym five times a week. You have to be um, <clears throat> lifting weights. And it's more so you just have to find something that you do enjoy, mm. something that allows you to move around, something that allows you to have, you know, that physical, um, you know, moving around, eating better, making better choices. That's really what it, it, it comes down to. Yeah. And so coming into the specifics of what you then do, which what you prefer, that can be discovered at a later stage. But the most important thing is you just need to move around and you just need to have something that you do outside of your everyday life just to foster a space whereby you have something that, allows you to you know outside of work and everything that is stressful you have something that you can go outside and just pull back into yourself yeah yeah in in, in your experience um how does women's fitness differ from men's and and, and having said that are there any specific considerations or strategies that women should be aware of mm. um i think well i think obviously uh women and our bodies are different and also we have our body composition is also different and so with women you may find that things like our hormones and all of that comes into play when it comes to training yeah. and i think you know as what a woman and a man goes into for the gym it's two different things with mm. men you go into the gym is to build my chest Sunset you know comes what I'm, saying? Out. I'm looking at my <laughs> arms all the things fingers crossed you're also looking at leg day um, <laughs> <laughs> and then with ladies you go in there it's like okay i just want to build on the lower body i don't want to do so much on the upper body and so that's what then your goals are going to be different and so the way that the two train are different but i think the biggest thing is um for example us taking care of our cardiovascular health those are things that are important for both and i think when it comes to women just finding your space within that within the gym finding what works for you not being afraid to take up space not being afraid to be in the weight section of the gym um I that's think been that my I, biggest problem yeah that fear of being you, you know i i, I yeah, always I've try and find arms. a specific time of the day yeah yeah where i can go gym where, where, yeah. the, where the real gym guys are not there <laughs> because <laughs> it's intimidating it is it is and i think especially um for people that are beginners for people that aren't regular mm. gym goers it is intimidating I, I know so many people that have started out working out i think even a lot of my clients that start off working out and come to me in the with the you know i started off training i started off going to the gym i got in there and it was just so overwhelming yeah and i just didn't know what to do where to start what equipment how to use it and you feel ask. like a fool if you don't know yeah. how this yeah. machine works yeah, yeah. That's the way. i don't yeah. want i don't want anyone yeah. to see me because on the, the equipment yeah. has that little chart <laughs> yeah stuck to it and you gotta and now it. i'm reading that thing yeah. how does this machine work and everybody's amateur. looking at you like amateur and then someone yeah. looks at me and i'm like ah oh, no, no 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 i got it <laughs> just looking at my phone but also i could say like for me I, being in the gym for over seven years now it's like i still go into the gym you know when i think to myself how to do this exercise i still look at my phone go on to tiktok turn my brightness down you know what i'm saying like look at it and be like <laughs> how do you do this you know what i'm saying no one has to know but you know you do get to uh you do still do that even after years of being in the gym so i, I just see it as a space to you're always learning and i think when you can receive guidance i, I highly encourage that because as i say it's an intimidating space mm -hmm. so having someone there with you a gym partner all the things i think can be really helpful once again we are with uh, bonge gumete uh, who is a health and wellness um, coach life coach i could say you're a life coach right yes yes and a real life coach not like those chiropractors that are all life <laughs> i don't know what it is about chiropractors <laughs> becoming life coaches but they are um and we're talking about uh, in particular women in the yeah. in this fitness journey and and physical and well uh, a mental wellness journey i know i know jose has got another yeah. question around balancing i'd love for us to speak on balancing responsibilities and setting goals and you know pretty much trying to be very realistic about them because mm. many women juggle multiple responsibilities mm. you know there's work mm. there's family there's yeah. personal care there are so many things that we need to prioritize mm. what are your top tips for integrating fitness and wellness into a very tight busy schedule i think the most important thing is you know taking a look at what your lifestyle is like and also not seeing it as because 
I've seen this person do four days of training per week. I need to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Fitness isn't a one size fits all. There mm. is something for everybody. So you just finding what works for you. So also it doesn't have to be in the gym because a simple walk is still good enough. And mm. so within that busy s schedule to see what works for you and your lifestyle, a workout can be as quick as 30 minutes or just from your day. A walk can be that 20 minute walk and that would be good enough. And so just maintaining what is realistic for you and not trying to set maybe a huge goal or because you've seen somebody else um do uh like i said four days of training or yeah. be in the gym five days it isn't that it's simply that within your busy schedule find what works for you and also tr trying to figure out what um makes sense for your lifestyle and what's going to benefit you also with the goals that you have and kind of looking at it in that way piecing it out and it's not going to look the same every single week it's not yeah. going to look the same um all throughout the month but it's just some days i just just try to make sure that on most days i am in the gym on most days i am medic making better choices with my food on most days i am taking care of myself in that way yeah. what, what what role does physical fitness play in in mental health um i think it first of all i think it has a huge role um as i said when i first started out for me those were the first initial benefits from working out because i got into the gym being heavily depressed and stressed out and all the things so i think it has a a, a huge role because it assists you working out is uh, a natural mood booster because of the endorphins and so just being in the gym um, does something for your mental health it does something for your mind it does something for your stress your depression your anxiety and just being in that environment and doing something other than what your normal day-to-day -day is like or your uh, being at work so I think it 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 is crucial and which is why I always say that it's something that I encourage for every single person no matter the age or what your background is or what your work is because it the benefits are not limited and also we all need something that we get to do outside of our busy lives and all the things mm -hmm. and it's like I said it's this one time where you get to pour back into yourself yeah uh, question from my side is it's a three part question actually first mm. one a is three part yeah it's a three <laughs> part <laughs> question uh, first part is uh, you mentioned that you had studied uh, mm -hmm. this particular field how lucrative mm -hmm. is it and can you make a sustainable living out of it mm -hmm. uh, number two is it as easy as going to the gym every day and doing reps and, and getting that motivation from seeing the results or it's spiritual mind mm -hmm. body etc etc third one do you think of people that go to the gym wearing makeup Okay. Sure. <laughs> you, third, you know you could have just asked three the, the questions <laughs> one the, after the other. I think the third one is the trigger, but uh, let me start with the first one. Let me start with the first one. I think what was the first one? The first one was is it lucrative? Uh, is it okay. Lucrative, yeah. I think it is. I think it just depends where you are. I think also now with the times of social media, you're not limited to who you can access. And so, for example, for me having built my um my social media um, audience it's not limited to one location uh, most of my audience is from all over the world and so you're able to build something like that mm. simply just by putting out you putting yourself out in that space it just is you have to um, see it also as a business you also have to have gen a genuine passion for people a genuine passion for working out and a genuine passion for sharing and I think most importantly that does come across um, when you do speak on things that does come across with your audience and so I think it is something that is lucrative and it just is you also have to not see it as you know I set a mark for myself to say in two years I have to be here mm. now it's it, you just have to just go and eventually everything kind of pieces together um, the second question second question was is it as easy as doing reps the motivation where does that come from no I think it it isn't because it's it's um I know for myself, it's more so even getting to the gym in itself is still a challenge. Yeah, but it's I think, a, it's a challenge. yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think twice about it, but it's like you, you, you know, when you have a set program, when you have s goals, it becomes easier for you to be able to, you know, get into the gym. Motivation last two weeks, I'm not even going to lie. Thanks. The first two weeks are like, yeah, it's exciting, all the things, you know, even for example, like with my clients, we've just started now. It's like, ah, oh, they're so excited. And I tell them, I'm like, mm. in week the third, four. in the, the week, week four, four, you're going to ask mm. me and be, you're going to be you're going to be blocking me yeah because it's like i don't want to see your face anymore so <laughs> it gets like that which is why the first two weeks are motivation but the remainder of that is just simply discipline mm. and so if you do not have the discipline and you do not have goals that are going to keep you in the gym far beyond the aesthetic goals you're not going to last mm. makeup gym why makeup in the gym now <laughs> i think the gym um you and know phones and taking and tiktok yeah oh, yeah <laughs> i think it's 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 you know you i think we, if you enjoy the space um, you are, I know for myself, you want to feel good. 
most important deal. That's also why you're in you the gym. So that. when you when you when you add a little you know a little something, you know, I'm saying it does something for your confidence levels. I don't know about a heavy foot, face beat, all the things. That's a different story. But I know personally for me, because also it is my job, and I spend I'm in the gym for like two to three hours. So this is my daily work. And so, you know, to touch up a little bit. And also it's the kind of thing where you're not afraid to sweat it out, right? That's mm. proof of the work that you're doing. So that's how I feel. So, you know, I'm saying you want to touch up a little bit, put a little bit of class, you know, feel like good. Also, this is where beat. you get to meet people, right? Low key, you get to meet people, you get to make friends, you get, to, you know, so, you know, you want to look good. Yeah. Let's talk about nutrition, mm -hmm. the biggest one, because health experts, gym enthusiasts say it all begins in the kitchen first. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you go <laughs> to the gym, it begins with what you're eating. Yeah. How do you balance the two and, and when do you know you're doing it right? I think uh, with nutrition, I think the, the first thing that I'm going to say is that it's, we're no longer in the times of uh broccoli and dry chicken and white rice Thank God. yeah it's no longer like that and so i think also that's the thing that keeps a lot of people not trying to eat healthier because healthy is termed as i gotta i have to do the extreme thing and it isn't that it really is just a balance and so trying to find what is the balance for me being able to still eat the foods that you enjoy um because as i say it also is something to say that when you are eating balanced it's seen as you're going on a diet mm. whereas it's more so no the diet is not it's going extreme this is just eating in a balanced way which is what we all need the balanced way would be you still enjoy your foods if you want the chicken you want the, this you, see, you, see, you still have your yeah. little you know but it isn't the kind of thing where it's like i'm stuffing myself with vegetables just to get to a goal that does not work mm -hmm. or starving myself because of the idea of weight loss that also does not work you yeah. have to be eating simply because you need th this far beyond just your fitness goals as a mm. person to function mm. you do need to be eating mm. so when you limit yourself and when you see it as uh, one way of doing things you know you're going to find it very um you know just horrible you're going to have a horrible experience so the biggest thing is the, the balance and also your body will tell you when what you're doing is good for you because you feel good you mm. genuinely feel better when you are eating better you genuinely feel good and just your energy levels your skin is going to tell you, you know, there's a lot of things that you're able to take a look at within yourself that tell you that you are making uh, progress in that area. And so I think it's the biggest thing. Just try to find balance. Do not go to the extreme. Just balance it out throughout the week. If I want my takeaway, I'm going to have my takeaway. But also discipline is most important. Mm. And in closing, um, when we talk about resources that are out there and available for people to use, you recently launched uh, your own fitness app globally. Uh, you've launched it in the US right. and here. Talk to us about that. Well, yeah, we just launched uh, my fitness app. I think it's been in the works for uh, quite a uh, long time now. Um, and we, in our first week, ha we had over 500 of um, some of the ladies I have on my socials joining in and signing up to be a part of that, which has been amazing. The response has been great. And so what we do is we focus on individual needs. So specifically, what is um, what your life setup is like? And then I come in and curate a workout program as well as a meal plan that suits what your current lifestyle is like and also just walk you through um what that is like because I think another thing that I wanted to move away from is just you know just throwing out a program and having you figure it out you just having access to say should you have questions and I feel like people always do you are able to come to me and ask questions have a conversation and all the things and I think just being inspired in that way and also just having a community where you are able to have that um, and I think being able to have the fitness app being able to have uh, we have uh, the apply pressure whatsapp group which has a almost 2,000 of us in there, um, women and, and motivating each other and, you know, sharing the real, like, things that come with working out and being in the gym, asking the questions, oh, I'm in my cycle, how do I trade? Asking those kind of things. And mm. so just building something like that for me has been something that I've always wanted to do. And I think it's um, so, I think it's amazing that we have something of that sort and I just only hope that it grows. And so it's it's something that is available to anyone. So you just, it is just a sign up and then we, my team reaches out, take a look at if uh, your goals match what I am able to do and how I'm able to help. And then we take it from there. Well, you know what? Thank you for the for the discussion. Thank you for coming through this morning. Thank you for having uh, me. Apparently, you've prepared some sort of like five minute workout for us. Oh, yes. We're going to be yes. doing that. Yes. You can check yes. that on the socials. <laughs> we'll also link you to her app and her socials as okay. well. Uh, Bonga, thank you so much thank for you so coming much for through me. and for inspiring. And who knows? I might find myself on the hip abductor <laughs> machine <laughs> <laughs> looking at the charts <laughs> sometime again. Because I said September, I'm going to go on like a little health journey. So I've only got one got day two left. Days, yeah. <laughs> one day left <laughs> and then it starts.